Okay. Uh, I'm grateful to Kim for um, doing the first bit of this because for some reason, best known to itself, my computer doesn't like PowerPoint. So there's a few slides of PowerPoint before we actually move over to the dictionary itself. Um, so next slide, please, um, Kim. Is it changing slides? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, um, as you already have heard, the villain of the piece has actually joined us this afternoon, but uh, David Tatham, uh, um, a former governor, and it was David's uh, baby this, and it's worth noting that the dictionary started life nearly 20 years ago. So this is, represents 20 years work, both in the printed volume, which is that's the front cover of it, uh, and also the website. A thousand copies were printed, uh, there were originally 480 biographies, 176 authors, and 345 photographs. And uh, it's now regarded very much as a standard reference book on the history of the Falkland Islands, well, before 1981. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, and one of the things I've enjoyed about this, looking at this presentation, is just working out the number of people in the study group who actually have been involved with the, uh, the dictionary. One of the key people that helped David in the first instance was Frank Mitchell, and you'll see him shortly. Stefan, uh, can you go back just a second, my friend? Yep. Are we back? Thank you. Stefan produced the original website. There's a surprise, bless him. Uh, I found at least, and I probably got it wrong i found at least 14 members of the study group have written individual articles and you'll know that the uh, editorial decision was made that it was restricted by and large to people and events before 1981 mainly because if it had involved the events of 1982 it would have simply overwhelmed the book and the thing you'll discover about this dictionary and the biographies in it is that there's a heck of a lot of history in the Falkland Islands and hasn't got anything to do with 1982. Next slide. However, no sooner had uh, it been published, a thousand, and by the way, all the thousand uh, books, the thousand um, copies of course, have all been sold. You can buy them um, secondhand, um, though I suggest you try, uh, from various people like Amazon and A Books, Though I seriously suggest you sit down before you actually open the page up and see what they might cost. Um, however, with the website, of course, you don't have to. Uh, many uh, amendments and corrections very soon appeared, and David used to do an, uh, a running a series of erratas. A lot of comments were made about a number of people who didn't appear. For example, someone like Ian Strange. Um, there's the constant need for updating. And then, of course, if you want to reproduce it again, there are the costs of printing. And the object uh, of moving over to a website was to increase accessibility, very much so, to include a lot more people and a lot more images. And in 2018, Tom McAdam, who is the son of Jim McAdam, the editor of the Falkland Islands Journal, who lives in Brisbane, produced the first version of the online DFB. Next slide, please. And in uh, the average year, uh, we now get over 13,000 hits per annum. A lot more biographies have been added, and images have increased fairly dramatically. Um, I, this morning, uh, put in, and I hope to show you later on, the 1,706th image has just gone in. Average use is about 50 people a day. It varies up and down. We've been able to add references, which were not in the book. We've been able to add uh, external links, which were not in the book. We're now completely linked into the archive website. And uh, it, it's uh, being constantly updated. As I say, I just put another image in this morning. Next slide, please. 
Now, if I've forgotten anybody or didn't discover them and your name is not on this list, please will you forgive me? But these are the people that I've discovered uh, who have already had a hand one way or the other, who are members who've been involved. Dear Bob Barnes, for example. Bill uh, Featherston, Ian Hart, very significant Ian Hart. Carl Lellman and Frank Mitchell, who I already mentioned. Ronnie Spafford, of course, Terry. And in latter days, uh, thanks to various messages back and forth, people like Kim and Wilf have been very helpful. So although it's not about philatelic per se, there's a lot of philatelic input in it. Next slide, please. I just thought you might, this is the last one. I just thought you might like to see the effect that the death of the Duke of Edinburgh had on the use of the, the dictionary. That great spike in April was all around his death. The number of images that were downloaded off our site and the number of uh, references that were downloaded off our site was really quite remarkable. A lot of them went to Argentina, I might add. And uh, below are the, um, so you can see the average is around about 50 or between 35 and 40. 50-ish every day. Um, and those are the two references you'll need to see. Falkland's biography, just type that in and you'll find it. That is it now for, for the PowerPoint. I may need to get back to me now, Kim. Yep. Do I have to show you my share screen, do I? You have to do a share screen, yep. <laughs> Can you see that? We'll see. You should have the front page of the dictionary. No, not yet. Uh, yeah, I could. You should be able to do it. Try again, Stephen. I just put it on. What am I not doing properly? You're not sharing your screen. I thought I had shared. Share screen, you should then have to pick the screen you're doing and it should say share. I'm pressing shared screen. Okay, the first. The first thing to notice, my friends, is that it now looks completely different from what it used to look like, those of you who used it in the past. I just want to get rid of all these me's on here. How do I do that? There we are. So that's what the front page now looks like. And as I say, those of you who used it before will recognize that it is very different. And the object of the exercise is to greatly increase the ease of use and accessibility. So that's the front page and that's the welcome page. And you will then see that the search box, can everybody see, can you all see my bigger cursor? Yeah. yeah. Right. You'll see the search box is now much larger. In the past, it used to be lurking up here somewhere, but now it's much here, uh, much clearer here. And you'll see that there are six now, as opposed to what there used to be, three featured biographies uh, every week. They change automatically every week. All you need to know is, is along the top here, uh, but I'm going to go straight to the tech. Now, first thing to notice, my friends, is if you go on to any of the images, you'll go straight to the biography. Take this one, for example, which is uh, Bishop Wake uh, Sterling. And there he is, there's Bishop Wade Sterling. I'll come back to it again in a minute. The other little feature that you might like to notice is all these lovely faces. Don't you love this face? Isn't that glorious? I want a moustache like that. Yeah. Uh, if you go to this here, you can, it will show you what, who the faces are. There are more faces here than appear because it depends on which version of the screen that you get. So we've got screens 
sufficient for widescreen, narrow screen, and also smartphones. 40% of the access to this site is now via smartphones. But again, if you go to any of these, like that one, for example, you go straight to his biography. So there's the biography, and there's the front entrance. Home, biographies, about, and contacts. And this is the one that you'll need more than anything else if you're going to search, which we're now going to do. And you'll notice the search biography is now much bigger, and they're then in an alphabetical order. But having mentioned his name, we'll go to Prince Philip. And the thing to notice about all these uh, um, biographies is if you put your cursor on the picture, you get a bigger version of it and the credits. There's the famous occasion when Prince Philip won the horse race in 1957. Here he is on South Georgia, Shackleton's Cross. This is a rather good photograph. The Britannia and the Protector. There he is welcoming people, being welcomed into Stanley on the public jetty. This is the house which I'll show you later on, was the house of uh, a consul. Prince Philip with Basil Biggs, who is the, was rather, the husband of Betty Biggs. And if you notice here, you'll see that Biggs is in capital and green. Touch that and guess what? Oh, look, there's dear Betty and her husband. So they're all linked together. And there's the last visit when he went in 1992 with Governor Fullerton and his wife. But what I wanted to show you was this. You get author information, which I'll tell you about in a bit, and external links, references, comments that are made by some people. But external links is quite interesting. Now, the next bit you're going to see is in the days before there was such a thing as health and safety. This is something you couldn't do with the diction, or the printed version of the dictionary. Sorry about the adverts. Sorry about the adverts. Watch how this brick is glued to the wall in seconds. It's been six months since the attack on Hang Pearl Harbor. Where and does so that come far, from? The war has been tried. I'm not certain how that happened. This glue will shock you. Hang on. Watch how this brick is glued to the wall in second. A ship from the Great Vegan Whaling. Steams alongside the Royal Yacht Britannia while the Duke of Edinburgh prepares to visit the whaling men. I just wanted to show that to you so you could see how much we can do with the, the website that we could never have done with the book. So most of the webs, most of the biographs, uh, 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 biographies have external links and references. Quite a lot of the external links are to the, uh, the archives in Stanley. You'll also see occasionally things like see image so-and-so, for example, that one. And there is Prince Philip in South Georgia with Pierce 
Butler, the uh, the manager. So look out for the and in the text, for example, if you see a name like this, see that's in capitals and green. Off you go to Shackleton's biography. So that's the that's the basic idea. So what I'd like to do now is to show you a few more biographies that might be of interest. It always helps if you can spell. Frank Mitchell, the lovely Frank Mitchell. He wrote his own biography for this uh, journal, for this book, and he was amazingly uh, self-effacing, as you would imagine. Here's Frank. This is Freddie White. Freddie White's a very interesting man. He was the captain of a lot of the ships in the Falklands. There he is, Lafonia, Fitzroy, and the Darwin. But there's Freddie White with Frank. But my favorite picture, and thank you, Stefan, for it, is this one. Can you imagine Frank on the back of a horse? Wonderful. Now, what's interesting about Frank Mitchell is if you come down here, apart from all the articles that he wrote for the Folk Islands Journal, you'll see this little box here that says author info. There's Frank's direction. And more. And there's the number of articles that Frank wrote. And very good they are too. My next one is Governor Arrowsmith. Thank you, Stefan. It was, of course, during Arrowsmith's tenure as a governor that. Uh, a, a famous design error occurred. Here's Governor Arrowsmith here. Very interesting group of people. And you'll see in the uh, caption, a number of them are in capitals. That's because they've all got biographies of their own and links including one of my favorites. This is Harold Bennett. Dear Harold Bennett. Used to grow amazing roses in that, that uh, conservatory. This is Tommy Thompson, well known to many of you. Isabella Atkins, again, will be known to you. Here she is on her wedding day. She was the post office clerk. A biography written by Ronnie Spafford. But what's interesting about Atkins is Isabella. When they retired, or they came back to the UK, and their son, John Stuart Mill, who was born in the Falklands, is the first person to, who was born in the Falklands to qualify as a medical doctor. He's got his own website down here, look. Ronnie wrote a number of biographies for the dictionary. It's going quite slowly, come on. It doesn't want to do it. Oh well, back we go. And we can't leave this man out, of course.
Arthur Grenfell Barton, relative of a well-known member of the study group. Here he is sitting on the fence, which is something he never did in real life. There he is at the opening of the Ajax Bay um, uh, meat processing plant, looking distinctly unhappy. And there's his wife, there's, Al there's AG and his wife. This is a rather good photograph. Here's Prince Philip on the race course. And here's the great A.G. Barton himself. You'll notice, by the way, you could cycle through the images. Bell, Frederick Seeker Bell. This, of course, is the Battle of the River Plate. There's the Exeter in Stanley Harbour, somewhat bashed about. Here's Bell himself. This is Bell. You'll know from Hugh Osborne. Uh, there's lots of uh, information now about airmail in the Falkland Islands. Here's one of the planes that uh, did it. Here's Bell with the hospital staff. This is Admiral Harwood. I like this photograph. I've recently added this. This is Bell at the premiere of the film, John Gregg. John Gregg played um, played uh, uh, the cap the part of Captain Bell. And again, I thought you might like to see this. Sorry about the adverts, but if you don't pay the license, you have to put up with them. to WWF's Climate Crisis Fund today and your support will help us persuade more key decision makers to do the right thing. At WWF, tackling the climate crisis cruiser, though battle-scarred, comes home, in spite of the German boast that she'd never make it. And although her arrival is unheralded, dense crowds are there to welcome her, and no wonder. The homes of about 75% of the ship's company are in women. As she nears her berth, the crew line the rails, and cheers burst out afresh. And is Captain Bell, Exeter's commander, and proud of his men? Well, here he is. God's battle itself. I think everybody knows now what happened. There's little left for me to say. The most outstanding thing in the whole lot was the behavior of my ship's company, which I find very difficult to find words to say enough about. They were simply magnificent. Mr. Winston Churchill is piped aboard. I'd like to cut that short, I'm afraid, my friends, because we've uh, got a lot to get through. But it just gives you an idea of the power of uh, this particular website. Uh, moving on. I can't resist this. Betty Biggs, bless her, who ran the... Uh, the Philatelic Bureau with charm and efficiency. One of her daughters was born on this ship in Stanley Harbour. 
there's her house, suitably patriotically painted. Basil, her husband, and there they are in retirement. And again, you'll notice there are lots of references uh, and comments. People can make comments. They are moderated, of course. But her, uh, Betty was a Rollins, and two of her brothers, John and Harold, appear in this book. Now, this is for Kim. Carl Elman, we all remember Carl Elman. Here he is in retirement in New Zealand. And you'll know that he was responsible for lots of things philatelic, including, of course, the Fellowship of the Bellows. And there's one of the aircraft, look, there's Falkland Islands. It's one of the aircraft that was purchased as a result of the Fellowship of the Bellows. I came across this not so very long ago. Um, I didn't know it existed. Here's it, on his wedding day. And another one that I think you will appreciate. Oops, some of us can't spell. This is one of the more recent biographies, this extraordinary man called John Huckle, naval officer, decorated to submariner, Antarctic with FIDS. There he is with FIDS. There's Vivian Fuchs, and there's John Huckle. Lovely team photograph. He also was an extremely able navigator. There's the Philomel and the Penelope. He learned to fly. He was a second Figas pilot. He was also the navigator on this ship called the Olaf Sven, which was involved with the um, aerial survey. There's the aerial survey helicopter, Falkland Island Dependency Aerial Survey Expedition. There they are in South, uh, in, uh, in, um, on Deception Island, the two cancer aircraft. And as we know, there he is in retirement. As we know, our beloved chairman has written an extremely good account of wings over the ice. This is Kim's presentation done for uh, the uh, uh, the philatelic study group. And there we are. Okay, it's going a bit slow, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. My point, however, is just to make the point that because of those links, we can link into all sorts of other things. Okay. Here's one for Stefan. Stefan wrote this, as you will see, Stefan wrote this, uh, this entry. And there's some very good, extremely good uh, external links to it. There's uh, Norden Schultz's actual uh, books uh, that he wrote. But I like, thanks to Stefan, I really like this photograph. This is the, uh, the officers of the Swedish Antarctic Expedition, and you've got three of the great men all in one place. Here you've got Carl Scottsberg. Then you've got Norgan Schultz himself. And here is Carl Anton Larsen, the father of modern whaling. Thank you, Stefan. Here's one for Bob Barnes. Bob Barnes, as you know, wrote the book on the Paul Evans family. 
Here's Bob's name and the book. And there is the great man. And Port Howard, the farm that he farmed and managed. My second favorite place in the Falklands. And it's just like Scotland there, it's lovely. And it was my privilege to take the man's funeral in 19, uh, 1992. I had great admiration for Bob Barnes, and I have always enjoyed whatever he has whatever he has written. I've got three or four more to go, and, and then I'll stop. Just for your amusement. Here is a famous figure from the past, Robert Slessor. Dr. Slessor, much loved and revered in the Falklands. Um, Robert Slessor was a medical officer in, St in Stanley for a long, long time. But he'd started life working for FIDS, and there he is as a medical officer in Antarctica. A much decorated man mentioned in dispatches. However, that's what I like. He had a Rolls Royce. There can't have been many of those running, driving around in Stanley. And there he is there with the medical staff. This is Dr. Ashford, Ashmore rather. But not to be outdone, the Luxtons, three generations. This is the current generation, Bill. And there's Bill and Mrs. Thatcher. And Bill's uh, second wife, Pat. But when Prince Philip visited them in charters, Bill turned up with his, lap, with his Rolls Royce. I do actually know what Prince Philip said when he saw it, but if you don't mind, I won't repeat it, at least in public. Just two or three more and then I shall stop. Another piece of Another piece of um, uh, um, Ronnie Spafford's work is George Roberts. George Roberts was the colonial engineer, public engineer, director of public works, and responsible for lots of things, including building the 1914 um, battle monument. But this is what you'll know about him, of course. His collection of stamps. Let's just take a little excursion into George V. As we all know, the king was a great philatelist. And that's that stamp again. And I thought you'd like to see that. A well known overprint. But what's not so well known is that George the V visited the Falklands in 19, um, well, 19, in 1881. Here he is, George, as a midshipman. And this was his elder brother, Prince Albert Victor, who sadly died. So that's why George became king. And I'd like now to embarrass him. Here's David's. I hope this works this time. Aha. 
There's David's list of biographies in the book. And you'll notice that they're green, so you can go directly to them. There's that photograph again. I rather like the description of uh, this particular governor. Such a fuddler. That just allows me to pay tribute to David. And now one more, and I think I'll stop because it said you said 40 minutes. Well, we all know about George Travis and the Travis covers. There he is, the Honorable Philatelist. And there's one of the famous Travis covers. David Beach, bless him. But I wanted to finish off with this. This is the online uh, account of uh, Mike's presentation to the Royal Philatelic in November 2000. And of course, this is full, absolutely full of uh, his superb display. And we'll get down to the covers in a minute. There's his history. There's Lafone. There's Dean. There's Travis again, of course. And there's F.E. Cobb, bless him, who created the Fault and Iron Company, as we know it. And then we then get all these wonderful images. Thank you, Mike. There isn't time today to do all of this, but you can go and find it at your own speed. And this is the one where I wanted to finish. This letter from the phone to Richard Williams, Esquire, Pope Place, Falkland Islands. Right, let me go. So, in conclusion, make use of this <clears throat> as you will. And if you can suggest any other people who ought to be in this dictionary, uh, remember the, the deadline of, of 1981, please um, let us know. You can contact the relevant person. And then please make use of it. As I say, these six images will change every week. There's the search box. There's the list of biographies. Look for things in the green. Albert Victor. Look for the green. Look for the other images. A work in progress. And that is my 40 minutes. So I'm going to stop now. What do I do? Stop sharing and I'll stop recording.